Town Hall has a story about how it says, we investigated a suburban LGBTQ pedophile ring. Here's what we found. A month-long town hall investigation reveals disturbing new details about the, about the affluent LGBTQ couple accused of sodomizing their young adopted sons, now aged 9 and 11, and distributing homemade child pornography of the sexual abuse. Half a year after the shocking story made national news, Town Hall is the only outlet writing, following up on the criminal case in Georgia that, has, Georgia that has since seen zero headlines written about it. This is by Mia Cathel. Maybe we'll see if we can get her on the program. We found that it's far, far worse than what was first reported. Not only did the married men allegedly rape the two boys who were adopted through a Christian special needs adoption agency, they were pimping out their children to nearby pedophiles in Atlanta area suburbs. Town Hall's follow-up investigation discovered, recorded jailhouse calls, a trove of never-before-seen court documents, testimony from a family member who spoke exclusively with Town Hall, uncover the extent of the physical and emotional trauma the two elementary school-aged brothers endured, as well as the red flags that the state overlooked during the same-sex couple's faster-than-expected adoption process. You you look at the, they've got a screenshot from an Instagram from one of these people, it's cloudhunter89, and you look at it and They've got a picture of these kids and them holding hands at the beach saying it's been just over a year as their parents. We have loved every moment of it. it was a little rough starting out, but we beat the one year mark. This was our second year to the ocean. Last year was the first they've seen it. I just love how this picture turned out. Our little adoption family, the Zutlock family, uh, our Zulock family. Uh, As Town Hall reported in August, the suspects were darlings of the LGBTQ media. They were part of an anti-gay hate campaign promoting hashtag no hate uh, or no H8 and out magazine, which holds the nation's highest circulation among LGBTQ monthly publications, has repeatedly asked them if its website's pride page can feature their photos taken at the Atlanta Pride Parade. The adoptive father's 33-year-old government worker. I mean, that's what they. That's their new, you know, line of work. Right? Everybody's supposed to be in the LGBTQ movement. Is supposed to be the entirety of of government workers now. William Dell Zulock Jr. and 35-year-old banker Zachary Zach Jacoby Zulock, who was previously accused of raping a child from Oxford, Georgia have been indicted by a grand jury on charges of incest, aggravated sodomy, aggravated child molestation, felony sexual exploitation of children, and felony prostitution of a minor. Sounds like the DNC platform for 2024. William and Zachary are each facing over nine life sentences. They've pleaded not guilty. According to uh, A copy of the 17-count indictment Town Hall has obtained. The adoptive dads allegedly, I'm not going to get into all this stuff. But the point is, um, you can check this out at townhall.com. And, you know, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to read these things. This is why these media outlets, these garbage trash media outlets are silent on these matters because they never stand up for the real vulnerable, okay? They never do. They never do. They never will. These are media outlets that should be bankrupt. These are disgusting, trash media outlets that have done everything they can to deny the voices of real victims. The only time they've ever mentioned people being attacked uh, as kids by, uh, you know, like the only time they ever mention boys being attacked or assaulted is when it's the Catholic Church or a church. Did you notice that? which those institutions oftentimes are infiltrated by sick, sadistic people who are part of a movement to make a mockery and assault the holy uh, institutions that they're invading. But that's the only time you ever really hear them talk about the crimes against children like this, right? Normally, they're talking about, these media outlets are talking about how wonderful it is to take your kid to these pride events and these... uh, 
parades in which horrific, uh, disgusting acts are being displayed before three-year-olds, and then they're they're celebrating taking their six-month-old babies to, uh, you know, these different drag queen things where, you know, folks who are supposed to be Pentagon chiefs are walking around in obese outfits and all this stuff. It's disgusting. And uh, we're supposed to take these people seriously. Uh, but it keeps pointing to this direction, doesn't it? It keeps pointing to this kind of outcome. But it gets so little coverage, doesn't it? It gets so little coverage, which tells you everything you need to know about the priorities of the corporate press. And uh, similarly, I saw this thread from Natalie Denise about how Ethiopian World Federation has made a surprising petition against Madonna, child trafficking and fear of social experiments rendered on Malawian children. More accusations to resurface. According to RaisingMalawi.org, the intent behind the organization is to support orphans and vulnerable children with critical resources, including education, medical care, food and shelter, and psychosocial support. EWF is asking President Lazarus Chakwera to look into the intricacies of her charity, Raising Malawi. There is concern over the integrity of her organization and possible intent to exploit children, specifically child trafficking, sexual exploitation, sexual slavery, adoption reversal, threat of coercion, fraud, deception, and abuse of power or vulnerability. EWF cites that back in 2006, during the during her adoption case, she should have disclosed her 1992 soft corn book, porn book titled Sex. You can do a search for the type of content included in the book. She then has these stories. You can read this thread. I've got it on our Twitter page about how you look at these headlines, Daily Mail, how Madonna charmed Malawian adoption judge who asked uncomfortable questions because she feared Pop Queen was robbing country's greatest asset, its children. She adopted four-year-old twins, Esther and Stella. And uh, she goes on to say that... Um, well, you it, the thread goes on to show how different parents and grandparents felt tricked in a similar pattern in which they thought that the child would be temporarily adopted and then returned by Madonna at a certain, at a later age only to find out that they have not had that access and one of them their grandmother has tried to see the child mercy and they have not allowed her to do that Madonna has done everything she can to use her power to just control then she wanted to set up some kind of Kabbalah center in Malawi, and then she, you know, just a lot of aggressive uh, domination-type tactics by someone who's very powerful. And you see the pain and the misery of these families wanting to have more accountability as she's, meanwhile, taking these kids like the boy and dressing them up as a woman and all kinds of sick stuff. You know, this is the disgusting stuff. Is it any surprise, folks? Why was Madonna foisted upon the American people as an icon to emulate? Who are the folks that finance that ridiculous person's rise as someone to emulate? Why does she take on the word Madonna? Why is that something that we had to be subjected to? Why is it that her behavior never gets her debanked, but Laura Loomer gets debanked. Why? Why does that happen? What kind of a country do we want to have? What kind of a country do we have? How do we get to the type of country that we would like to have? Those are questions we need to think about.